Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, top 10 rookie mistakes. So the first thing I want to make clear here is I'm not making fun of anybody. You know, everybody starts from someplace, and uh, a lot of times in that initial process of educating yourself in something, you know, you make some mistakes. So what I'm really trying to do here is talk about some of the mistakes that I made. So if you're going to be a dentist, you go to dental school. If you're going to be a lawyer, you go to law school. But how do you go about becoming a knife maker? Well, truth is you have to teach yourself a lot of the skills in knife making uh, without anybody else outside. And I'm not talking about becoming a professional knife maker here. I'm just talking about, you know, learning the basics of the craft doing it as a hobby or anything else it might turn into. There's not really a school that you can go to, or at least most people don't have access to a school that they can go to and just say, hey, make me a knife maker. Uh, so as you're educating yourself in this new skill, a lot of times you're going to run up some blind alleys. I certainly know that I did. So the point of this is not to uh, make fun of anybody for choices that they make uh, in terms of you know, learning how to become a knife maker. It's much more about, honestly, mistakes that I made and ways that you can kind of avoid those and uh, move forward in teaching yourself this skill as easily and quickly as possible. So mistake number one, trying to make the sword of Gryffindor right out of the gate. I don't really know what the sort of Gryffindor is, but uh, you know, the point is a lot of people jump into this right out of the gate trying to make something very, very difficult, something kind of mythological and you know, that means a lot to them. Truth is, you have to start small. In my case, the first thing that I tried to make was a katana. Total disaster. Still lying there, rusting on the floor of my shop. I mean, I cannot tell you how many things I did wrong. Lesson learned. Rookie mistake number two, using mystery steel. So everybody has that guy who says, oh, I've got a you know piece of a Sherman tank crankshaft or something that's going to make a fantastic knife. Well, it might but it might not. You know, in, in the knife making business, we call this mystery steel. It's some kind of steel that we don't really know the composition of, we don't know the working qualities of. Fact is, every single steel is different and you have to treat them differently or you won't get the results that you're looking for. Number three, believe in the hype. You know, it depends on what kind of uh, direction that you come from. In your interest as a knife maker, you might come out of martial arts and be interested in Japanese swords or Chinese swords. You might be interested in history and you're interested in uh, Western European swords. Uh, but any direction that you come from, there are always people who are going to be selling you a bunch of hype about how great certain swords were and certain steels are. And this steel is a super steel and everything else is crap. You know, making knives is just like any other business. It's made up of little bitty details of learning to be competent at little tasks and little skills, and there's no magic bullet. Competence in almost any field is about blocking and tackling, doing the little things right. That's what gets you to the big win. If you try to do heroic things without the right foundational skills, you'll just end up disappointed. There's a kind of general psychological point here, which I think is common to successful artists, craftsmen, entrepreneurs, and what it is is this. You have to be able to hold the big picture in your head, the long-term vision, and immerse yourself in the short-term, the nitty-gritty, at the same time. You know, the vision, that's the sunrise, the horizon, it's grandiose, it's beautiful, it's distant. The moment, where you're actually getting the work done. It's dirty, it's hard, but to be good at knife making, you gotta be able to balance both of those things. You gotta have both of them in your head at the same time. Number four, 
running after the super steel right out of the gate. You know, a lot of times when you first get started, you're looking around on the internet and there are all these guys saying, oh, this kind of steel is the best steel and everything else is no good. And so you think, well, gosh, I ought to get hold of that steel and then start working with that steel. Well, the reality is that there are a lot of what are known as super steels out there today, generally stainless steel um, that have very complex alloys and they're difficult to use, you know. And uh, my recommendation is that you start with simpler steels. If you want to try your hand at heat treating, go with O1 steel or with a simple carbon steel like 1084 or maybe 1075 or 1095. Each of these is a little different, has their own little nuances, but they can all be used to make high quality knives with relatively simple equipment. Likewise, there are tried and true stainless steels like 440C that have been around for a long time and heat treaters really know how to heat treat them well. My recommendation, start with those first. They're cheaper, you can make mistakes on those first, and then go to the super steels later. Some of the new steels really are great, but why spend a lot of money on them now when you don't really know what to do with them? Rookie mistake number five, trying to make your knife too perfect. What I mean by that is that, you know, it's, it's tempting. You're making your first knife. You want to make it beautiful. You want to make it functional. You want, you know, every idea that you've ever had in your mind about what a great knife is, you want to do it the first time out. But the reality is that, you know, you're going to make some mistakes on that first knife. And a lot of times you're better off, um, trying to really, uh, you know, start with something that you can get done quickly, make your mistakes and learn your lessons and move on to something else. And if you spend too much time, you know, this is what some people call turd polishing. You got something that is, you know, not that good to start with, and then you put a big shine on it, but it's still a turd. So uh, that, you know, that's something that you want to avoid. Learn those lessons quickly by your mistakes, and then move on to better knives as you sort of up your game. Rookie mistake number six, not making your knife perfect enough. Okay, now I just said that the big problem is that you make things too perfect. Well, what happens is as you sort of progress as a knife maker, um, you know, there starts to be a point where you do need to really aim for, if not perfection, at least, you know, trying to make uh, your, your knives really high quality. So what I mean by that in particular is that a lot of times after the first few knives, sometimes people start to get in a hurry um, and kind of neglect fit and finish. They leave scratch marks on, you know, from, from the tools that they've been using or they don't put a very good finish on it. And really, you know, you have to decide somewhere along the way when you're going to start to pursue perfection as opposed to just trying to learn lessons. Um, you know, there's not a perfect point where you can say this is where you have to abandon uh, an approach that's um, uh, just oriented to learning a lesson and this is the point where you have to make everything perfect. Frankly, to this day, sometimes I make a, a knife and I'm just trying to learn something and I'm doing it super quick. Other times, you know, I want everything perfect. And so I want to be in control of that decision. Rookie mistake number seven, the gear fallacy. So I don't care what, you know, pursuit you're, you're in, guitar playing, um, sports, you know, whatever. People are always thinking, if I just buy this better baseball bat, I'm going to hit home runs. If I buy this cool guitar, I'm going to sound like Jimi Hendrix. Yes, gear is important, and yes, gear can help you achieve better results. But at the end of the day, you know, it's your eye, your artistic sensibility, uh, your patience, your diligence, those are the things that really make the difference in whether you're producing good knives or not. Not whether you spent $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 000 on fancy gear. You know, as you get better, you're going to buy better tools. But at the end of the day, it's not gear that makes the difference in my successes or my failures as a knife maker. 
Rookie fallacy number eight. I can't do this by myself. You know, I need a master. I need a teacher, a professor, a spirit guide. You're ultimately responsible for your ability to learn anything. I don't care what it is. Singing, dancing, uh, playing football, um, becoming a lawyer, you know, wh whatever pursuits are important to you, uh, you're the final arbiter of that process. And so, uh, same thing is true here. Uh, it's great to look for people, mentors, people that can help you out. And a lot of times, uh, having people who've been through the process can save you an enormous amount of work and they've got wisdom to share with you. But just because you live in some place that doesn't have 10 knife makers within you know, a 20 mile radius doesn't mean you can't learn how to do this stuff. You have to go out and you have to spend time in the shed, make your mistakes, and uh, trust yourself, trust your own judgment, trust your ability to learn new things. Rookie mistake number nine, and I get this all the time. Oh, I, I constantly am getting notes from folks who want to learn how to make Damascus steel, and they haven't really gone into knife making much at all. Um, Damascus steel making is pretty tool intensive. It's fairly complicated, um, and even if you get really good at making Damascus, if you can't translate the steel that you produce into a really cool knife or an effective knife or a knife that um, that functions properly you know what was the point of the Damascus thing and I, I think worse than that though really is that a lot of times people set themselves up for heartache because they think oh I want to do this Damascus thing and it's just very complicated there are a lot of it's expensive there are just a lot of moving parts to it and so they're liable to get frustrated and, and kind of lose interest. My recommendation really is to just start real small, make you know simple knives from simple carbon steel in particular, or do it from stainless steel and have other people do your heat treating. And uh, you know then you can learn the real foundational stuff. And then when you move to making Damascus, you just have so much more to draw on in order to produce really high quality material. Okay, so rookie mistake number 10. And you know, most of these are mistakes that I've made myself in one way or another. And this was this was definitely one that I made. Um, and you know, in part, it's because when I started, there was just way less information out there. But part of it was just my own lack of understanding of what I was aiming to do. So rookie mistake number 10 is not pursuing heat treating and metallurgy enough. Now, this is not saying you have to go to, um, you know, engineering school and get a college degree in metallurgy. That's not my point. My point is that learning to heat treat steel is absolutely the single foundational, most important skill that you'll get as a knife maker. So the earlier that you come to understand how steels work, um, to understand sort of the, the main variables in producing different qualities in steel, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So there are a lot of sources of information out there uh, about metallurgy and um, you know heat treating. Some of them are kind of advanced and complicated, but a lot of them are very um, commonsensical and pretty easy to understand. So. Uh, Follow that as best you can, you know, try and find out as much information as you can about heat treating and it will pay dividends forever for you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. 
Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrells Blades and check out my website, waltersorrellsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.